Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to Don't Be Telling My Business. Well why not? You said it wasn't you. Okay, we're going to be talking about Portia Williams today and you see how she's up there doing what she got to do. I think she's in New York. I'm not really sure but I think she was. And of, of course you know it ain't none of my business but it's loud or I should say as quiet as they're trying to keep it. I'm going to speak it out loud. Now, I don't know why Portia Williams went up here. She ain't got no bodyguards. She got two women defending her honor while this activist is showing out at one of her book club signings. Okay? Woo, or her book selling um, um, presentation she was doing at Barnes & Nobles. You know, greeting and meeting her so-called um viewers of her show as well as fanatics or fans of hers so she's out there signing books autographing it personally taking selfies with them you know doing a little pr thing that you do when you're trying to sell a product and child this activist show up and show out on portia okay and i was like girl only because you had to wear a mink a mink in the heart of new york just ain't good Portia I'm like where were your PR people where was your so called team they should have told you that you know people up in New York don't take too kindly to people wearing furs and you know if you're sensitive to children you gotta be sensitive to the animals out there so and I'm like Portia that meat is pretty yes it is and you need to quit you need to quit acting like you ain't got no sense okay especially when you ain't got no bodyguards up there protecting your behind which I'm like if you're making all that kind of money uh where's your bodyguard baby where's your bodyguard when you were sitting up there dating or were married to cordell you had bodyguards around you for certain events you were going to or whatnot um what what happened to the bodyguards baby if you're gonna be profiling and simon um has your good interests at heart why he didn't hire any bodyguards okay he trying to hold you there you know from acting a fool cutting up on somebody fighting somebody i'm sure we're still waiting up on that episode but why wasn't he why wasn't he with you at the tamar house show at your book signing maybe he couldn't get to all of them but a few of them could he not attend what's going on is he still in costa rica Doing something illegal down there. Something girl. Tell us. We want to know. We knows it. <laughs> but just getting right on into this situation. They blocked the lady out. And I was trying to look for another picture of her. But I guess y'all just going to have to go research it on your own. And see what you can find. Or you can go on yahoo.com. I think I found a clip. And I'm going to try to play it. Uh, for you all because the lady had to make a public decree she was up there just singing the phrases <laughs> and i'm like and it wasn't in scandalous it was scandalous of course but it wasn't one of princess songs okay so i was like we we have aisha powell uh she works for yahoo.news or dot com or whatever it is and she titled her article activists confront portia williams for wearing fur to book signing okay and i think it was in conjunction with the girl as well so we're gonna give them a shout out as well okay not just yahoo.news but the guru.com uh, and it goes on to say the reality star and author was approached doing her West Hollywood book signing. Okay, so I got it wrong. She wasn't in New York. She was in Hollywood. Okay. I, I, I only knew New York to be cutting up with that animal rights stuff. But, hey, I'm sure it's all in uh, the 50 states we reside in. 52 for others. Um because they serious peter ain't that they don't play with nobody they don't care what kind of race you are creed or color you ain't gonna mess with them animals out there especially those ones that are like exotic type animals that uh it's only like a couple of hundred or maybe 50 that's left in the world or something some uh deg to some degree like that endangered species is what i'm trying to say so 
uh, non-portion uh, Peter organization and people that love animals such as myself. Uh, we we don't need to be going killing folks. Uh, uh, live we call them. Um, can't think of a word that I'm trying to say, but I was gonna say livestock, but that's like stuff we eat, don't it, people? Okay, but that's what, that's not here nor there. We ain't gonna get into being a vegan or anything like that because I do like my meat. I like my chicken. Okay, and I like my beef here and there. Uh, God forgive me for it, but yes, I do like those things. It's called survival. I need to have those to survive. Even though I know I want to have the people in the back be hiding. No, you don't. You can be a vegetarian. You can substitute your protein for nuts and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I know that. I know that. Okay, I've been to several nutritionists. Been on several diets. Okay, so yeah, I know that. But I still like my meat. I still like my beef. Sometimes I like my pork. I like my bacon. Okay, bacon and baked beans. Bacon for breakfast, you know, with the eggs and the grits. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. But I got off in a tangent. Let's go back to the article. It said, former Real Housewives of Atlanta star Portia Williams was confronted by animal rights activists for wearing fur during a book signing on Wednesday. Okay. Yep. She could get her name tattooed or her fiance name or her ex-boyfriend name, baby daddy. But girl, don't be playing with Peter. Peter would give you a headache. Okay. A headache and a heartache in a heartbeat. Okay. Uh, Williams, who was promoting her new book, The Pursuit of Portia in West Hollywood, was approached by an activist who was pleading for her to stop wearing fur. Okay. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, she went up there on Portia's platform, really next to her, not like six feet from her, you know what I'm saying, probably about maybe 18 feet from Portia, just to give y'all a range. And like I said, Portia was not missing a beat. She was up there smiling and probably just kicking into herself. Like, where this crazy woman come from? Does she know she ain't going to stop my flow, my hustle? No, sir. No, Lord, no, God. No, she not going to do that. Okay. Because while she hollering, I'm going to still be sitting up here like a professional. Getting my coins, my dollars, my dinero. However you want to look at it. I am going to sit and take pictures. I'm going to take selfies. And I'm going to, you know, do what I got to do forget what that lady talking about. I'm like, Portia, that's nice. But again, you out in the public. You have no security around you. That woman come and bump you aside your head after you finish your sign, signing of your books, then you're going to feel some kind of way. You know, catch you on the alley side or follow you like a little stalker. So, please, child, get you some security. Okay, like you be having doormans open up your car doors when you uh, coming up to an event you want to go to or whatnot. You need security, baby. You need security because everybody out there don't too much care for you, Portia. Some of them Nigerians are very much so not happy with you. All right? And then you got people like activists running after you too. Shoot, girl. Pay the extra money, honey, for somewhat some safety uh, out there to protect you. All right? But anyway, going back, like I said, the lady got on Portia's platform. Portia didn't invite her. She just took the center stage with a whole lot of people looking at her and trying to figure out what she finna do. Why is she coming in a public forum of somebody else's um, event and trying to disrupt it? Okay, because Portia had a line of folks waiting patiently to get an autograph. They really didn't care too much about that book. They really didn't. They wanted to just touch, feel, be around, be seen with a so-called reality uh, star all right so the lady goes on and to say ladies and gentlemen i am not here to interrupt saying uh i'm not inter up here to interrupt anything well what were you doing ma'am <laughs> you gonna sit up there and hold one of her books just to get in and then once you get halfway up there you gonna make a show of your own on the side or what Portia trying to put out there for the people. Child, she said she wasn't trying to interrupt anything, but she had to say what she had to say, said the activist. As William was signing books, we are here to ask Portia, Portia, please stop wearing fur. I'm a big fan, and I really ask you to please go fur free. All right. Ooh, 
child, unbothered, Williams continued to sign books as a crowd of fans began chanting, We love fur. We love fur. We love fur. That was the chant as the woman was escorted out the building. Stage right, stage left. She had to go. Okay, I don't know if it's the two women that uh, simultaneously uh, escorted her out, skipped, shoe footed, show footed, electric slided on out of there. She has to go. Okay. The 40-year-old reality star who has publicly shared her life on television for nearly a decade offers a more introspective approach to her personal growth in her new book. Now, I ain't trying to be funny about it. I ain't trying to be like a naysayer or a, we call it a, a, we call it a downward bit now. What is it called? A, a down, a, a Debbie Downer. I'm not trying to be that. Okay, I'm really not. But can anybody tell me in my comments, being respectful and all of that, what changes her portion made? She tried to upgrade herself to a Nigerian who allegedly supposed to be worth a billion dollars. Okay, million dollars. I mean, because Dennis, who she was engaged to, he has plenty of businesses around here in Atlanta um, and several different um what do you call it? Eateries of his hot dog king or the original hot dog factory or something like that. Um, he has several uh stores out there for that hot dog adventure of your life if you want to try different amazing hot dogs. And I'm probably it's centered around Detroit type of living, uh, and how they presented their hot dogs for the world to come and partake of and he just adopted it and brought it to atlanta okay so i'm like uh i don't know if he has franchises out there but he has a few uh hot dog um businesses it has been very lucrative for him throughout several years of being an entrepreneur okay but that was just my spiel it wasn't in this latest article but going back to the article uh, it says, joining the Real Housewives in its fifth season in 2012, Williams gave fans a peek into her relationship, friendships, and family. Originally married to former NFL star Cordell Stewart, Williams showed the woes of her marriage and many viewers pointed out the controlling chauvinistic behavior Stewart uh, displayed towards Portia. And I'm like, child, Portia can go around here and say she was a hurt soul and um men hurt her and this that and the third but baby girl i'm here to tell you you cannot let other people put their insecurities out on you and you can't thumb yourself down to uplift someone else because if that's what they're wanting you to do that's not submissiveness that's controllingness okay and you need to exit stage right left or just flee down the middle and get the heck out of Dodge, okay? That's someone who don't really care for you. They want to own you. They want to possess you. All right? So, by you saying you had to be submissive and sit there and do whatever your husband told you to do at the time, uh, you were supposed to be submissive and do it. Well, honey, if he told you to jump off the cliff, would you go to the edge look over and say okay i think i trust you i'm gonna jump girl you're gonna be flat as a pancake and dead as the world okay but anyway it's called use your common sense the lord gave each and every one of us common sense and to pray for discernment and you will get your answers okay but miss portia is just out there trying to from what i understand in this book is to show certain avenues of her life that went sorely wrong and she wants to blame everybody that they took advantage of her but i'm like okay did you not take advantage of the situation being on television a reality show and you didn't necessarily have to act a fool show yourself in such a demeaning light 
to get that paper. You see what I'm saying? Most people shied away from reality shows. Say they weren't with, they weren't with that kind of foolishness on what Bravo wanted to bring out and show to the masses. I mean, internationally. Type of, uh, what do you call it? Hood show, I would say. So, I'm like, girl, did you get paid well? Did you get paid well? That's all I'm saying. Because the show is not looking or painting you in a good light. And people are like, well, maybe she wanted to do it that way. Yeah, that's true. But do you want to be going down in history as someone that's looked at as a garden tool? As a gold digger? As a person that's very insecure with themselves? A person that definitely gets taken advantage of? And somewhat she feels that she needed to be uh, taken advantage of so that that person that they're trying to protect and love on will feel better about themselves. You see where I'm going with this portion? It's just a downhill tra trajectory that you're going and you're not even trying to pull yourself up. And the sad part about it, your family is not trying to help you either. I'm like, how many times are you going to cash in for that big cash payout to sacrifice looking like an idiot out here? I'm just saying, just my opinion, okay? And my opinion don't mean a hell of a beans, okay? It's just my opinion. I'm just looking at what they're giving me, and I'm trying to find the moralness in this situation. And I, I just don't find anything. I just find it very ratchet. It's very entertaining to a certain degree when you start thinking about how it's going to look as I get older. How is it going to look uh, for my daughter? She's going to be able to take some of the backlash that some of the kids are going to be ragging her about because I'm on TV. Did you think about any of that, Portia? That it may not affect you or you think you can handle it, but... The rest of your family members, especially PJ, because she's definitely growing leaps and bounds. She ain't no baby no more. Well, she is a baby, but she's not like a cuddly baby that don't have an attitude. This one can talk. <laughs> this one can tell you freely what's on her mind. Okay, she don't pass the terrible twos, okay, or the inquisitive twos, I like to say. All right, now she's growing faster and bigger and pretty every day. Do you think she's going to be able to handle the backlash that she's going to get from her little people talking to uh, her about your actions, your behavior, your demeanor on this show? You know, while her friends may have parents that are doctors, lawyers, entrepreneurs that's trying to, you know, build their empire and it's something that, they can pass down as a legacy to their family with no regret or any type of uh, negativity surrounding the business. You know what I'm saying? Like people who own car lots or car, car, uh, car showroom floors or people that, you know, are contractors, um, engineers, you know, really solid base careers that people can look up to. Because now... As role models, we got strippers being role models. Look at Jocelyn Hernandez in the cabaret. She teaching hookers and street walkers and strippers how to do what they do, but make it legally and, and make it, you know, be a legal institution and uh, teach people how to do these things. <laughs> I'm like, girl. And that show was kind of entertaining too, but when I go back to the mor morality of it all, the, 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 the tone or tonation as well as uh, what you're trying to leave for other people to admire you, your legacy, what, what are you leaving as a legacy that people can build on and say, well, she did it, I know I can do it, and pull themselves up from nothingness to greatness. That's all I'm saying. And are you really going to be able to sit down and say, well, 
I did it for you because that's a piss poor response back to your daughter if she ever asked you because then your daughter might be smart they're like Noel be checking Cynthia Bailey over there I'm like who is the mama here is Noel the mama over Cynthia or is it Cynthia the mama because it seems like Noel got a little bit more smarts about herself than her own mama Cynthia Bailey okay so I'm like it's um hell and you go down the line Riley was checking candy over there and you can't get kind of a little frustrated like wait a minute, hold, where, who where who and what are you talking about and who are you think you're talking to but Riley was giving her facts that was undisputable and undeniable about her behavior how she's tra- traping after or running after Todd Tucker and not really paying attention to her self-worth. Yes, Rada checked her mama. Now we're going to have baby PJ come up here and check Portia for what's over with. And she's going to have to have a long talk with her mama. And hopefully she do it in private and not in the public forum. Okay, because then again, people such as myself may be, you know, curious and want to put a spin on it and give their two cents in. That's why I said you don't put it out there. You can't handle about an uh, object or have an opinion about you so if you're gonna do something do something less ratchet is what i'm saying but going back to the article it says williams divorced in 2013 and found her new prince charming in entrepreneur and businessman dennis mckinley in 2018 williams life seemed to have come to a high point she found independence love family and her first child pilar johanna now my whole thing was where did you get the situation and bringing a baby in the situation that you were currently in without marriage? Then, then so-called moved in with y'all. Y'all were trying to have a everyday situation where both parents was under the same roof. Now, of course, Dennis was in a loft downtown in Atlanta, living a single bachelor life. And we got hooked over Porsche. Porsche like, no, nah, you gotta change your ways. You gotta, you gotta do this this way. We we trying to be a family, so we gotta act like a family. And that's the whole point. It was acting like instead of creating an environment where y'all could come together as a solid family. Okay, it was just like, all right, I didn't do it with Cordell. I didn't express myself. I didn't assert myself. I was being submissive. You got hooked up with other men down the road before Dennis came in the picture. You were trying to be very controlling and manipulating to the situation. You were telling them what you wanted them to do for you. But where was the up uh, stream uh, success rates, for lack of, lack of a better word? What was going to be the trajectory of them coming out? with whatever you were seeking for so you know they were put having their hands out but well, what's in it for me type of scenario because you were messing with some young dudes very nice looking handsome men of course because you ain't never really picked nobody that was lackluster or not easy on the eyes until him okay and i ain't gonna call him the g word because <laughs> one of my uh follower said said no don't be doing that to him he can't help how he look and so leave him alone so i'm gonna leave him alone i will call y'all know who i'm gonna call him y'all remember that movie that g movie i told y'all about on my latest video if you haven't seen it go on and see it okay go on and view it partake of it and get your laughing kiki on because like i said it's all just fun and games you know it's just like you sitting at the table uh kitchen table with me or we sitting lounging in the den area and we just kicking in and just saying what we need to say that you know it's just between us we family we don't care about these people and them people don't care about us but when they doing something's crazy out there and it's just unheard of it just becomes a general conversation it just be a topic of conversation between family members over here at this house okay and that's Dale Chanel 48's world okay everybody's family over here because we can agree to disagree you know we can be indifferent one with each other but we're gonna be respectful and we're gonna say why we feel what we feel okay because everybody have opinions everybody have 
things they want to get off their chest about something that's been bothering them that they don't saw out there in society. And they just had to put their two cents in it. That's all we're doing over here. Just making observations. Because all this stuff is allegedly. We don't know. We don't sit at these people's table. We don't go around these people. But when they put stuff out there on social media. And if it's okay, we try to uplift them and say, you know, good, good, good. You know, I'm glad you're doing that. Glad you're doing that for the community yourself. And, you know, whatever you're trying to do in society to make the world better. Kudos to you. But when you come out here, talking outside of your neck, you're doing foul things, and you want to make money off of it, uh, like I said, it ain't none of my business, but I'm going to have an opinion about it. That's all. Just an opinion. Just like people have buttholes that releases species out. We all have opinions, okay? But going back to the article, it said, however... That relationship also came to an end after William said that McKinley was unfaithful to her during her pregnancy. After the end of the relationship, Williams began her current controversial engagement to entrepreneur Simon, y'all know, G, who was married to her former Real Housewives of Atlanta friend, Fallon G. Now, from what Portia said, they were never friends, but yet they were never foes. So, however you want to digest that, dissect that, you can do it on your own. But I'm going to take a life since Porsche is pretty much in the hot seat and being deemed because of the optics that has been shown out here in the social media world. She's a man stealer. She's a gold digger. You know, that's some of the percep- perceptions people are making on her. Even though she's admitted, even on her show, uh, Family uh, Portia Family Matters Pursuit or Pursuit. Well, hey, wait a minute now. <laughs> I'm in the book confused and a new show. Woo! Okay. The family, wait a minute. Portia Williams Family Matters. Wait a minute. The Real Housewives of Atlanta. Portia Williams Family Matters. Okay, there we go. Don't make sense because it should have just been Portia Williams Family Matters. And that's it. It shouldn't have been the whole Real Housewives of Atlanta being her show. I'm like, what kind of introduction is that when I think about it? But anyway, how many seasons do we have for Portia? And how many episodes do we have during this first season? Because they really need to shut it down personally. It don't need to go past number three. But, of course, we haven't seen the big fight, which is in that clip that should be coming up. I'm thinking Sunday. Unless they just try to stretch it out, as it seems like they are, because she started out as a rating of over eight hundred thousand and something, then it dwindled down to seven hundred, then it's dwindled down to a low six. For you know it, it ain't gonna be on television anymore on Peacock. I'm like, whoever thought this was a good idea. Yeah, Portia probably making some serious money off of it, but at what cost? Because technically, she ain't going to be able to live it down. The the dirt has already been uh, cast on her, thrown at her doorstep as a man stealer or a person who's messing with a married man prior to him dissolving everything legally. Uh, She's taken up with him. The only thing that hadn't transpired is she has gotten him to try to move in with her. And she moving in with him. Even though they said they bought a house. Okay. But it don't look like ain't nothing being resolved with the house that she lives in in Duluth. Which she got sense. She better keep it rented out. Let her mama stay there. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't sell it. That would not be the case. Because... As I, as many other people feel, Porsche ain't going down no aisle with this man. Now he got some lady running after him, begging for her two hundred grand back, and for some reason, Simon don't want to foot the bill. Now if he's worth a billion, that's not even a drop in the bucket that will make a difference on the splash of his money in that account. Okay. He needs to just go on and make like it's ten dollars he giving her, even though it's be two hundred thousand. Um, he just needs to pay up. He needs to pay up, not Portia. None of this money should be going anywhere out of her bank account, cause she was dumb for one, buying him five days worth of business suits. 
if he had the money, we would have been spending on his credit card or just drawing it out of his debit card out of his bank. Okay? That's what we were really doing. I would show him how to dress, giving a woman's touch, you know what I'm saying? And bringing him back into reality. Because what we've been seeing on him when he needs to be kind of dressy, casual, he coming out there looking like, I don't know, he going to the grocery store or something. <laughs> <laughs> or he going to a movie by himself, you know, wanting to chill. Because, you know, how poor she be getting down, how she dressing, you know, is not compatible to what Simon be coming out there looking like. Like he can't dress for nothing. But it is what it is. Going back to uh, the article, it says, after the end of the relationship. Oh, no, I read that. Going on, it said her relationship with uh, Simon is now the focal point of her new Bravo show, Portia Family Matters, the legendary Miss Williams. Her book, however, dives into more aspects of her life that have not been shown on television. The star opened up about her bouts with childhood depression. A lot of us go through that. Uh, to me, it's almost like for the urban or i can say the black community not speaking for everybody just certain experiences i've had people that have uh lower incomes you know and they not privy to certain uh resources you know they tend to go without you know some children um didn't have good shoes to wear didn't have good quality clothes to wear compared to their friends or counterparts or you know, sometimes the hair wasn't groomed because the parents couldn't afford it. You know, it's just a lot of stuff. So I can see why children in my race could get depressed. Uh, because, you know, those that do have, they want to defy all the rules in the school system. Especially when my daughter was in school when they wanted to uh, uh, have, what do you call it? Where you're dressed in uniform type situations. Where, you know, the uh, upper class kids or whatnot their parents didn't want to do that they wanted them to come in sean john i saw you know baby fat anything that was a price tag on it that was high in the hundreds they wanted their child to look that way they didn't want them being like military type type school wardrobe so i could understand that about children being depressed and um you know, kind of want to be suicidal if possible. If that was that they were going through or whatnot. That the feelings that they were feeling. And they felt that they wanted to in their lives. Because they couldn't keep up with the standards of society. And what society says. What looks good. Or this is what you have to look like. And be in a career such as. To be deemed as successful. And you know, like uh, that's not true. But uh, that's the perception when you're younger and you don't know no better. So, um, you know, she just goes into a lot of stuff in the book. She talks about R. Kelly and how, you know, he abused her. And in that situation, I have to look at like, no, nah, oh, Portia, I ain't even going there with you on that one. Because you chose to look up that man. You chose to go out to see him. Because you could have said, no, nah, I ain't coming out there for that. I mean, this ain't no casting couch type situation. You either love my talent. I can send you a CD or something I don't worked out. You let me know if you could do anything with it or we can work together. Then we'll meet at a uh, studio or, uh, you know, a recording studio or something to that degree. Other than that, no, nah, we ain't coming out there doing no freaky deaky type stuff. Okay, I don't get down that way. You will respect me and my voice. Uh, Aretha Franklin voice. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Find out what it means to me. R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Take care of T-C-B. Taking care of business, honey. Taking care of business is what I would have been telling R. Gally. But since you didn't roll that way, you felt you had to do what the other people you knew had to do what they had to do to get roles and plays, get uh, backstage passes or whatever, or being doo-wop singers, getting with a good artist and things you had to do to do what you wanted to do you had to pay the price okay and it was always not in monetary things it's just using that body yaddy yaddy okay but child honey i don't know portion she, she better get some bodyguards up in there and stop uh trying to make these people come out of nowhere and find her you know what i'm saying because she's gonna find herself in a situation where it ain't gonna be too kosher okay and you know she like to fight but honey, them Peter people like to fight a little better, okay? 
And you just know that we done messed up your whole wardrobe and then messed up your whole day. But that's all I got for this video, guys. I thought I'd just get down and talk with y'all a little bit about, you know, this lady showing up at Porsche's event. Talking all kind of crazy about, you know, the uh, rights of animals. And she shouldn't be wearing fur like that because a poor innocent animal got, you know, killed for her wearing, uh, for her to have a wardrobe in a sense. Their life had to be taken so she could be comfortable in how she looked. And they said it ain't right. Oh, and when I really think about it, I'm like, well, yeah, they right, they right. But was it the best deal to sit there? Boycott outside of the bookstore. Don't don't come in there and mess up everything like that. Yeah, that shouldn't have been done. A little bit more class. PETA is a very good organization in what they're fighting for and preserving and giving us an outlook and an inside uh, scoop of what really goes on into, you know, endangering animals for, you know, our enjoyment or pleasure I think if they were doing a human being like that we wouldn't sit there and want a human being to lie die just because we wanted their hair or their teeth or, or whatever that we needed to get from them that's basically how I look at it but y'all get down in them comments and y'all tell me what y'all thought about uh Portia and this activist going head to head but pa Portia paying the person no mind <laughs> and should she have bodyguards protecting her Okay, because if she could show up, certainly that woman that's wanting her 200 grand back from Simon, she could show up too. And that was truly be I would take the Peter hit before I t take that lady that's looking for my so-called fiance coming up at one of my book signings. Time on, where's your fiance? Because I need my money, girl. And you know, Porsche like to get them hands, honey. So that could be a soft charge and all big one bow. Okay. But y'all get on them comments and y'all tell me what y'all felt about this situation, okay? We can have a conversation about it. And if you haven't um, subscribed to my channel, think about doing so. It's cool over here. We talk, we kick, we kick, and we uh, probably tell jokes and make you laugh, all right? But if you uh, don't want to do that, please subscribe to the channel. But if, like I said, if you don't want to do that, then just like my videos and share them, okay? But if you feel so inclined, I would love for you to definitely share, like my videos, and subscribe to the channel, okay? But I'll see y'all next video. Y'all take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.